Hi, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, I'll show you how you can create your own ice cream. Let's jump right in. Press Shift A, Mash, and add a cylinder. Change the vertices to 16. And press GZ1 to move it up. And then press Numpad 1 to go into front view. Press Tab to go into edit mode. Z, and then toggle X-ray. And then select the top X, top vertices. Press G and Z, and then with control move it up to another block and then press S and hold control to three, four, five. Okay. Then press set and we can toggle X-ray. Now we'll press control R to add a loop cut and then we'll move that up a tiny bit. Press control again, control R again, and another loop cut and we'll press S and we'll scale that down and keep adding loop cuts and here you can kind of shape it the way you want i'm gonna add a loop cut in the middle right click to confirm press ctrl b and i'll bevel it i'll press e to extrude right click to confirm and then s and then shift set and i'll scale that up and then i'll add another loop cut right there and then let's make that stop there and add another loop cut right there then i'll go to the bottom press 3 to go into face select select the bottom face and then i'll press i a few times to inset i'll go back into front view and then i'll add a loop cut right there i'm gonna also add a loop cut right there in the middle and then one more loop cut right there and then there and then we'll press s and shift set we'll scale that up and then control B to bevel. There we go. And then we'll go to the top. Press 3 to go back into face select. And then we'll press I. Inset. G inset. And we'll move it down. And we'll do that once more. There we go. Now go into front view. Press tab to go into edit mode. And then we'll press three to go into face select z and we'll toggle x-ray and then we want to select this and then these like that and then i want to go ahead and go to face and i'm going to go ahead and poke the faces and i'll press one to go into vert select and then i'll select these middle verts hold shift and select those and those middle verts as well and then press s shift z and i'll scale them down like that now we'll go to select select more or less and i'll select more and then i'll press n to pop up my menu here and then in item the mean crease i'll set it to one now we can press set we'll toggle x-ray again now we can leave edit mode by pressing tab i'll press ctrl 3 to add a subdivision modifier i go here to modifiers and i increase my render to three there as well I go back into edit mode and now I'll add some more loop cuts. So press Ctrl R, move it all the way up. Ctrl R and move that down a bit. Ctrl R there and move it all the way down. Maybe add a loop cut there. I'll move one up all the way there. And then one a bit more down. And then one there all the way down. And then that one a bit more up. Add one there. And then we'll add some right here as well. And now I can leave edit mode by pressing tab and then right click shade auto smooth. And that's my cone. You can literally make it any shape you want. I'm uh, going to go ahead and go with this. Okay. And now I want you to go to edit preferences and search for in a get extension, search for extra and make sure extra mesh objects is activated and then we can press shift a mesh we can go to extras and we'll add a simple star make sure it's set to eight points now press g and set and we can move it up tap to go into edit mode and then a to select all s and we'll scale it up and then press s and set and we'll scale it up in the set axis there's something like that now press three to go into face select select the top faces and then press s and we'll scale them down so we've got a nice pointy 
object then we'll press ctrl r and then with our scroll wheel we can increase the loop cuts to about five of them then we'll select our top faces again there we go then press o to activate proportional editing and then now with r and z we can rotate it around and our proportional editing is this circle around our um, selection which means that the whole object will move with our selection so then we can just rotate it around the z axis and kind of curve it up like that now i'll go into front view by pressing down pad one and then i'll press g and then i'll move it up a tiny bit to make it a bit more pointy and you can make your proportional editing a bit smaller for this and then i'll press r to kind of rotate it a tiny bit maybe even more like that and then i'll deactivate proportional editing s and i'll scale it down to even a smaller point there we go then press con uh, tab to leave edit mode and then press ctrl 3 to add a subdivision modifier increase the render to 3 right click shade auto smooth and now we can kind of look at our shape um, I think it's a bit too small at the moment. If we go into top view with numpad 7, we can see that it does not fit our cone. So we can press tab to go into edit mode, A to select all, S, and then we'll scale it up. Just so it kind of covers the whole cone like that. And now as you can see, it's a tiny bit too big. So press S and Z. And we'll scale it down on the Z axis. And then now we can select the bottom faces, press E and Z, and we'll move those down and we'll scale those down. There we go. And then now we can place it onto our cone. Just like that. And there's our ice cream model. So then we'll go ahead and add a camera. So we'll go into front view, press shift A, and then add a camera, press G and Y, and move it backwards. And then we can go numpad zero to go into camera view. We'll go into our output settings. We'll change the resolution to 1920 by 1920. And then press G and Z twice. And we can move it back a bit more. There we go. Now we can move our ice cream right there. Press shift A, mash, add a plane. Press RX 90 to rotate it. And then with G and Y, we can move that backward as well. Go back into camera view tab to go into edit mode and then scale it up so it covers our background there and then for now i will first add some materials so i'll go to our shading menu and then i'll press z make sure you're in material preview and there we go and we'll start with our cone click on the cone add a new material call it cone okay and then we'll add a color ramp so press shift a search for ramp add a color ramp and then we'll add press ctrl t with color ramp selected we can remove the image texture by pressing x while having it selected and then the mapping goes to the color ramp and then we can connect the generator instead and then we'll connect the ramp to the base color and then we can kind of move those closer to, to, together. We'll fix our rotation a bit. There we go. Yeah, that looks uh, straight for to me. Then I'll move this down a tiny bit. Move that up. There we go. Now I'm going to change the colors of them so we'll change the dark color to b19732 and then the light color will change to ffd193 so it's a very subtle gradient but it adds a nice depth to it now i'll add a noise texture so I'll press shift a and then search for noise and then the noise is going to go into a color ramp and then we'll add a bump node as well. And then we'll connect the noise to the color ramp. The color ramp goes to the height of the bump. And then the bump goes into the normal. And then here we can see kind of like it gives us this nice texture. 
So then we just want to decrease the strength of the bump node to maybe like 0 0.05, maybe 0 0.1. Yeah, I think 0 0.1 is nice and we can play around with the scale. So I want to increase the scale to 20 maybe and this gives it a nice kind of like nice like cone uh, texture. I want to go ahead and increase the roughness to 0.8 as well. There we go. That looks perfect. All right. Then for the ice cream, um, we'll start with the white cream. So we'll just go ahead and press new. And then for that, we'll only have to go ahead and change the texture, the roughness to 0.2. And that's all. And then I'll go into edit mode and I'll press set, go to solid. And then I want to go and select every other swirl. So with Alt and Shift, I will click there. And I'll click there. I'll select that, that one. And then select every other one. And there we go. Once that is done, we'll go to Materials. Add a new material slot right there. And then we'll add a new and we'll click assign. And then now if we go back to material preview and we go into a camera view, we can change the roughness to 0.2. And then we'll go and add a ramp. Select it and then add it to a base color. And then I want to press control T again, move the image texture, move these closer make the mapping and then add the generator to it and then once again i'm going to go ahead and move these closer to each other to see our rotation a bit and then we'll play around with that just a tiny bit this doesn't have to be straight i kind of want it sideways a bit so like certain parts are lighter there I like how that swirl kind of like is higher up here and it's lighter there. I am going to move these a tiny bit like that. And then I'll change our light color to E7 BFD7. And our dark will be E7673. There we go. And now to make life a bit easier, we'll name this red ice cream. We'll call this white. And then we can go ahead and give our background the color as well. Select the background, add a new material, and it will change the base color to E7B6A9. And we'll name it background. There we go. Now we can move this in position. So I'll press R and rotate it and then R and set. And then press R twice so you can kind of rotate it like that. Now I want to make a duplicate. So I press Shift D and I'm going to rotate that one like that. And then maybe like that. I think that looks kind of nice. And I press G and Y I move it backwards. There we go, and we can kind of move that maybe into a position right there. Yeah, I think this looks nice. Like that. And then I'm going to go here, and then I'll select the red ice cream, and I'm going to make a copy of that material, and we'll call it pink. And then all we have to do is just change the colors of that one. We'll change the darker color here to D18 to C5. And here we can kind of play around with the color as well. I think I'm going to make this even a bit more saturated. There we go. So that's D16 3CC. And this one is E7A FCD. Now I want to 
move my camera a bit closer. And then I'm going to move these a tiny bit more into the middle. Now we'll go ahead and add some lights. So we'll go to layout and then we'll change it to a rendered. Before we add lights, I'm going to go and change the world color. Press the world tab here and we'll change it to BB6379. And this might look extreme now, but it will be nice when we add our, um, when we add our lights. So now I'll press shift A and I'll go to light and I'll add an area light. I'll press G and Z, move it up, select the light settings. We'll change it to 400, maybe even more 600. And then we'll change the shape to disc and then the size to three. There we go. And then we can move that up a tiny bit. Press period, change your pivot point to 3D cursor. Then press Shift D, R, X, 60, R, Z, 45, minus. And then we kind of shine our light just there. I'm going to go ahead and from top view, move these so they're kind of more centers in the middle of both of them. And then we can see. There. Maybe this should be a tiny bit more there. And then I'll press Shift D RZ 120. Shine a light from the other side as well. There we go. Now I'll add a backlight. So I'll press Shift A light and add an area light. Press R X 90 minus G and Y. Move it behind. And then we'll go into camera view. And then we'll increase the size so it covers the whole camera view. And then we can increase the strength to like 800. There we go. Just for that like kind of small rim light. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'll move my background back a tiny bit. Make sure it's still in uh, covering your whole background. Now we'll press Shift A light and add an area. RX 90 G and Y. Move it towards your background. And then we'll change the shape to disk. And then size to 3. Power to maybe 500, 600. Start off with. It's going to be a lot more. Change it to 1200 to make the gradient a bit stronger. I'm going to move it closer. There we go. Yeah, I like how that looks for now. I'll go to render, color management, maybe change it to a high contrast. Might be a tiny bit too much, medium high. Yeah, there, that looks good. Now I'm going to play around a bit more with my. Um, camera with my lighting now that we have everything in place so we can press R and Z R and X maybe move it a bit down so it comes a bit more from the side there we go same for this one maybe R X X and just move it down a tiny bit I want to make this back background a tiny bit lighter. Just a tad bit lighter. There we go. And that's it. Now all we have to do is render. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed creating your own ice cream. Are you looking to level up your blender skills? Check out my other tutorials for more tips and tricks. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and drop your questions or ideas in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. When you share your masterpiece on Instagram, don't forget to tag me so I can see your amazing work. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon.